guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a video today on how to properly size and fit your soccer cleats slash football boots. This is probably the biggest thing that a lot of people get wrong when it comes to buying a brand new pair of shoes. And in this video, I'm going to go over all the little things that you should consider if you aren't already when it comes to picking out a brand new pair in regards to sizing as well as how the shoes fit your feet. So if you're on the market for a brand new pair or maybe you feel like your shoes right now just don't fit you the way that you think they should, there probably is some information in this video that will help you out tremendously. So stick around, listen to what I have to say. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. When you're talking about how a soccer cleat actually wraps your foot, there's two main aspects. The sizing, which has to do with the length of the shoe, um, and of course the fit, which has to do more so with the general shape and the width, the way it wraps the length of your foot. Um, and we're gonna start off with sizing because that is the most important factor when it comes to fitting a soccer shoe properly because if the sizing is wrong, everything else will be wrong. Now, when you think about sizing and having a shoe that is too big for you, uh, you have to think about how a soccer shoe actually looks and how it's designed. If you look at a soccer cleat, it's very contoured. It looks like the shape of a foot for the most part. You can see that there's a distinct area where the midfoot is, there's a distinct shape to the forefoot, there's a distinct shape to the toe box area. It's made to wrap your foot very tightly, very close, and really leave no extra space on the inside of the shoe. It's supposed to act somewhat as a second skin. So if the sizing is wrong and your mid midfoot's not sitting quite in the midfoot area, your forefoot's not sitting quite in the forefoot area, and your toes are too far back, all of the structure, all of the technology that's being implemented and put into the upper of this shoe as well as the sole plate, because your foot's not sitting in the right spots on the inside of the shoe, you're not utilizing any of that technology, you're not getting any of the benefits, the shoes aren't going to feel the way they're supposed to. And part of the reason why you spend extra money on a high-end shoe is for these technologies and for superior fit. So if you intentionally buy your shoes too big, it really defeats the purpose of buying that high-end product in the first place. So a lot of people, as kind of a general rule of thumb, when they are buying a brand new pair of soccer shoes, if you want to leave some growing room, and this is a common thing for a lot of younger kids because they don't want to grow out of their shoes throughout the entire season, uh, is that you leave a thumb's width of space at the end. And that sounds great, and for a lot of people that works fine, but it's a little bit too general for my liking. If you think about a thumb, everybody's got a different shaped thumb, everybody's got a different width to their thumb, Every single, every single person has a different shaped foot. Everybody's toes are shaped differently. Every shoe that you're trying on is shaped differently. You're dealing with different sizes. There's too many variables that aren't consistent in leave a thumbs width of space. So for me, what I like to say to people when they're buying a brand new pair of shoes, and this is whether you're going to a store to try them on or you've ordered your pair and they've showed up at your house, when you try them on for the first time, your shoe should be as snug as possible while still maintaining a comfortable fit. So if you like to leave that little bit of extra space, you can leave that little bit of extra space, but there should never be a ton. The shoe should still fit snug. You should never be able to slide your foot, slide your forefoot, slide your toes around on the inside of the shoe. They should be held in place, not necessarily firmly, but, but comfortably. You should have a snug overall fit. That's how soccer shoes are designed to fit. I know a lot of people like to compare the fit of their soccer shoes to a casual wear shoe or a running shoe or something like that. And quite simply, they're not the same style of footwear, they're not designed to do the same thing, and they're not supposed to fit the same way. Soccer shoes are designed to fit very snug, very tight, depending on what your preferences are, and that's the key word there is personal preference. If you want your shoe to fit a little bit tighter, that's fine, as long as it's comfortable for you, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like it to be not so tight, but a little bit more so snug, you can do that as well. It is, again, really about personal preference in regards to how much room you should leave at the end of your shoe, but there should never be a lot. All right, so here is a look at the same shoe. It happens to be the A16.1 in the leather upper variation in two different sizes. On my right foot, I have my usual size 9 US, which fits me perfectly. This is the size that I would normally wear. Whereas on my left foot here with the black laces, the right foot has green laces, this is a size 10 US. So this is a full size up from what I would normally wear. And at a quick glance, they honestly don't look that different from each other, but the way they feel, again, 
not necessarily at first glance, or it might not be quite as obvious, the way they fit is very, very different. So the size 9 US, basically lengthwise, I'm left with pretty much no extra space at the end. And again, this is personal preference. If you wanna leave a little bit of space, if that's something that's more comfortable for you, and again, it depends on the specific shoe as well, you can absolutely do that, there's nothing wrong. But if you notice, the shoe wraps my foot perfectly. There's no dead space going around the edges. I'm sitting, not necessarily pressing against the edges, but there's no extra space here for my forefoot or toe to, toes to kind of wiggle around on the inside of the shoe. The midfoot fits nice and snug and is comfortable. It's not pinching or anything like that. And the fit in the heel is very good as well. I'm not having any slippage issues and it wraps my foot pretty much perfectly. They feel comfortable out of the box, which is how you should feel in most shoes from brand new. Now, my left foot, the size 10 US. Again, they look pretty similar. Nothing looks abnormal with how this shoe fits my foot. If you look at the space at the end, I have about that thumb's width of extra space. Um, and again, everyone's thumb is different. Everyone's foot is a different shape as well. That doesn't seem like such a bad thing. But a lot of people, they just consider the very end. They don't consider the sides. And if you look at the sides, I have about a half thumb's width of space going down both sides of the shoe, which means that my foot can actually slide around side to side in the forefoot and toe box area. And given that this particular shoe is leather, that leather material is gonna stretch, get even wider, especially because my foot's gonna be sliding around. And in the long run, I'm gonna have some major issues. Don't have quite as many problems in the midfoot because this is a synthetic upper, but in the heel area, again, I don't have quite the lockdown that I uh, get in the size 9 US, especially because my foot's going to have the ability to slide forward, something that I'm really going to notice once I start running around and especially several weeks into it, once the upper on the shoe has been given a chance to stretch. So again, you kind of have to use your own discretion when it comes to how the shoe fits your foot, but just keep these things in mind next time that you're trying on a brand new pair of shoes. Make sure the shoe fits your foot completely good not just the very end, look at the sides, look at the midfoot, look at the heel, consider absolutely everything because if something doesn't feel right or if it feels like there's a little bit too, ex too much extra space, uh, then maybe the sizing is going to be a bit of a problem and you may want to go a little bit smaller. The final sizing point that I wanted to throw in has to do with younger kids who are still growing and obviously them or their parents who are buying these shoes, they don't want to outgrow them before the end of the season. They want to get at least a full season's use out of their shoes um, and really my best advice and something that I've seen over and over and over again is that you're very very unlikely to outgrow your shoes over the course of a single season which generally spans two three four months it just doesn't happen very often if you're buying a pair of shoes to play in right now they should fit you right now you shouldn't buy the shoes intentionally too big play your entire season to the point where the shoes are going to be need, needed to be replaced anyways, and then go ahead and buy them too big again. They should fit you right now if you have to play in them right now, because the likelihood of you outgrowing them through the season is very, very unlikely. And more likely than not, you're actually going to need those shoes to be replaced at the end of the season anyways, because they're probably going to be worn out. So like I said, if you're wearing the shoes right now or you're planning on wearing them right now, make sure they fit you right now. They shouldn't be absolutely gigantic on your feet. You shouldn't leave a ton of growing room because the likelihood that you're actually gonna grow that much throughout the course of three to four months is very unlikely. In regards to fit, the first thing that you have to keep in mind is something that I talked about earlier in this video and that is soccer cleats are supposed to fit tight or snug depending on your personal preference. This obviously references width. And if you guys want a video where I talk about width, both wide, narrow, and regular width soccer shoes, I'll leave an annotation on screen because uh, that's kind of a whole nother video that you may want to check out if that's something that you struggle with. So again, I'll leave that annotation on screen. Go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. But basically you want your soccer shoe to fit pretty snug on both sides of your feet. You should never be able to slide your foot from side to side on the inside of the shoe, especially when the shoes are fully tied up. You want there to be 
pretty much no give on the inside. This makes for a more responsive feel, it makes for more stability. And like I said, it's how the shoe is actually designed to be worn. If there's a lot of extra space on the inside, you're losing a lot of the performance qualities of that shoe that you probably paid extra money for. And like I said, you're just not gonna get the experience that the shoe is intended to provide. So again, as far as the side to side width is concerned, the shoe should always fit tight and they should always fit snug but at the same time, you still want them to be comfortable. Another aspect about the way a soccer shoe fits your feet that a lot of people just get wrong is that they're not honest with themselves. They wanna to lie to themselves about whether or not they truly like the way a shoe feels on your feet. And everybody's done this. You've probably had your heart set on a particular pair of shoes. You really, really like the way it looks or you really, really like some element of that particular shoe. And then you'll finally get the chance to try it on and it just doesn't feel the way you were hoping. It, doesn't fit you properly or just doesn't fit right but you get it anyways and suffer the consequences being a shoe that is uncomfortable or just like I said doesn't fit you the way that it should so that's really my best advice and unfortunately because soccer stores aren't necessarily a thing that everybody has access to best case situation or best case scenario is that you live near a soccer store and you can go ahead and try on all kinds of different shoes and pick a pair from there uh, but a lot of people are ordering online so uh, you kind of always run the risk of having a shoe that doesn't necessarily fit you 100 percent properly when you order online and that's when you have to utilize the return policies um, or exchange policies if that's something that, like I said, just doesn't go right for you on the very first try. If you order a pair of shoes online, they arrive at your house and you put them on your feet and they don't quite feel the way that you were hoping they would, return them, exchange them, get a different size, get a different model, get a pair of shoes that actually fits you properly. Be honest with yourselves, guys. I know if you really want a pair of Superflies and you order them and they finally show up and you're super excited and you put them on your feet and they just don't fit right, don't stick with the Superfly. Get something else, get something that fits you properly. You'll be much better off for it. Something that a lot of people think is the right thing to do in regards to getting the proper fit out of a pair of shoes that doesn't fit them properly is going up in size to accommodate for a wider foot or a more comfortable fit. If your true size is a 9 US, you order that pair of shoes or you try that pair of shoes on in a nine and the fit and the length is perfect, but the width and the general shape of the shoe just doesn't match your foot type. That doesn't mean you should go a half size up or a full size up to have a more comfortable fit in the width and the shape, but have the wrong fit in the length. If a shoe doesn't fit you in your true size, it isn't the shoe for you. So I would never, ever, ever recommend going up in size to compensate for a wider foot or just a fit that doesn't work out properly. The final aspect of getting the right size and fit from your new pair of shoes is that you kind of have to have a mind of your own. You have to think for yourself, you have to use your own discretion, and you can't let other people influence your decision. Nobody else can tell you what shoe is gonna be most comfortable on your foot. Nobody can tell you what shoe is gonna fit your foot the best. Nobody can tell you what you like the feel of. These are all things that you have to be able to decide on your own. So yes, you can ask for help up to a certain point, but once that shoe is on your foot, you have to be able to decide for yourself whether or not you like how it feels or not. If you don't like how it feels, I don't care what that guy says. I don't care what that guy says. I don't care what your teammates are saying. If you don't like how it feels, you don't like how it feels try on something else. So don't feel peer pressured or just pressured in general to go with what's the most popular thing, what people are advising you to get. Because ultimately, if you put those shoes on your feet and you don't like how they feel, you don't like how they feel. You should definitely try something else out. So again, use your own discretion, think for yourself, and ultimately the decision as to whether or not a shoe fits and feels proper on your foot. That's something that, again, you have to decide on your own because only you know how the shoes will feel on your feet. All right, guys, that is it for my video on how to properly size and fit your brand new pair of soccer cleats slash football boots. Hopefully this video helped you out a lot. Um, and hopefully this video clarified that it's not quite as black and white as far as recommending somebody the correct size and the right fit. A lot of it is your own discretion and a lot of it is quite simply just trial and error. So again, my best advice is if you are ordering a pair of shoes online and they arrive at your house, 
If it's the wrong size, if it's the wrong fit, if something doesn't feel right, don't just stick with them. Exchange them, return them, get something that does fit properly, whether it is an exchange of size, whether it's an exchange of a completely different model. Just make sure that the shoes feel the way that you actually want them to feel. Don't just settle if the shoe doesn't fit properly. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. If you have any questions at all regarding any of the topics that I talked about in this video, leave your questions down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.